നമസ്കാരം ടു ഓൾ ഐ എം ഡിലൈറ്റഡ് ദറ്റ് ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് കിങ്ഡം ഓഫ് ബഹ്റൈൻ ആർ സെലിബ്രേറ്റിംഗ് ദി ഗോൾഡൻ ജൂബിലി ഓഫ് എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദർ ഡിപ്ലോമാറ്റിക് റിലേഷൻസ് ദിസ് ഇയർ ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് മൈൽ സ്റ്റോൺ ഇൻ അവർ ജേണി ഓൺ ദിസ് ഒക്കേഷൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് ഹിസ്റ്റോറിക് ഇയർ വി ആർ ഓൾസോ സെലിബ്രേറ്റിംഗ് ദി സെവൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യസ് ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻസ് ദോ ദി ഡിപ്ലോമാറ്റിക് റിലേഷൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് ദ കിങ്ഡം ഓഫ് ബഹ്റൈൻ വെർ എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് ജസ്റ്റ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി ഇയേഴ്സ് ബാക്ക് the deep rooted trade and historical links between our two countries dates back thousands of years the two countries share warm and friendly bilateral relations our bonds of friendship have been further strengthened in recent years due to regular political interaction and exchanges and our bilateral cooperation has diversified and expanded i was delighted to visit the beautiful kingdom of bahrain very recently It was my first official visit to the kingdom. I had the opportunity to meet the leadership and the ministers besides interacting with a cross section of our vibrant Indian community. I take this opportunity to thank the leadership and government of Bahrain for the welfare of Indian community particularly during these difficult times of COVID-19 pandemic. Indian diaspora in Bahrain has been instrumental in forging strong trade cultural and people to people linkages between our two countries as part of the golden jubilee celebrations a series of programs and events are lined up to showcase the journey of our bilateral relations including relaunch of little india in bahrain i am confident that the people of our two countries will overwhelmingly take part in these celebrations and cherish the historic moment showcasing the deep rooted historical connect as well as diverse aspects of our relations i am also confident that the multifaceted bilateral cooperation between india and kingdom of bahrain will reach newer heights in times to come thank you all namaskaram again This year is a milestone in the journey of our bilateral relations. India and Kingdom of Bahrain are celebrating the golden jubilee of establishment of diplomatic relations. This year is also a landmark year as uh, India is celebrating its 75th Independence Day. India is a very important country to to the world and to Bahrain in particular because even though we are celebrating 50 years of diplomatic relation which was started in uh, October 1971 but uh, our relation goes back to India for many thousands of years that's exactly what the president of India told me when I even submitted my credential to him you know Bahrain and India used to have a very good relation for it goes back to around 5000 years during the Roman civilization and Indus Valley civilization all the uh, items used to come by dhow from India also here and uh, until 1967 or so something Indian rupees was the currency here and still we old people they say uh, in so hundred fields they say rupee most of our merchants of our forefathers came here they were conducting business in spices and pearls and they were a significant part of the business community and the culture and the fabric of bahrain most of the shops in manama in the babel bahrain in the old souk had indian businessmen having their conducting their business with them and of course uh, were in close touch with the royal family as well we have something in common with uh, India which is the British occupation of uh, both uh, the countries where at that time 
Bahrain was ruled through the Governor General of the British Empire. Our political agent here, or the political the British political agent in Bahrain, was reporting uh, to the Viceroy in Delhi. Indian community makes up for around a quarter of population of Bahrain. Bahrain is one of the preferred destination for our community, which is reflected in the steady growth of Indian community in Bahrain over the years. I have seen in Bahrain a lot of uh, footprints of Indian culture in various uh, ways, uh, whether it is cuisine, dance, yoga, traditional medicine. If you see, there are similarities in many aspects of culture between our two countries. India is a very nice country. When I went on my first mission, I stayed almost nine months. I didn't come back to Bahrain. I found it very, very comfortable. My family lived it there and they love it there. And they are with me all the time in India. Even if you spend your life there, there are still things you'll be missing because India got so much to, to, to give in tourism and uh, economic and business. India, the time I spent in India is full of uh, wonderful memories and discoveries and learning more. To me, uh, India was itself a university, University of Life, where I think the most important thing I learned is coexistence, tolerance, and living together and respecting each other. I moved to Bahrain about uh, 20 years ago with my family. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to say that uh, Bahrain is not just a home away from home, it is actually home for me uh, and my family. And um, the bond that you see between the Bahraini and the Indian community is, is a model example of a society you know, that is coming together for well-being, self-respect and uh, prosperity. I did go to kindergarten somewhere near Kanu Garden. And then I remember going, um, obviously went to Asian school, that's where I began schooling. And I switched to Indian school in my eighth grade to experience a wide um, variety of um, Indian and multinational student crowd. You know, that is something that um, not a lot of uh, people get unless they are educated overseas. The one significant way in which it has contributed to me um, or my life or impacted me as a person is how down to earth it has always um, kept me. It kept my parents humble and therefore me too. My relationship with Bahrain goes back to a few years after I won Miss World. We had this really unfortunate incident in India, which was um, the earthquake in 2001. People who lived in Bahrain, who had their heart in the right place, got together and put up this event, a fundraising event. And we raised so much money from the Bahraini people, including from the royal family. It shows you a very different light to the Middle East, very positive light. It is, it is a beautiful place. It is filled with wonderful people and they are so liberal in their belief compared to the rest of the Middle East when it comes to being welcoming, not just accommodating, but welcoming of other religions. Um, I think we have got a temple as well in Bahrain. Some of our community members have come to Bahrain for now over two centuries. The 200-year-old Srinathji temple at the heart of Manama is a shining example of kingdom's tolerant and uh, liberal policies. This temple has been here since last 200 years and it has got an utmost value here. And our community came to Bahrain about 200 years back and with the permission of and blessings of Al Khalifa family, we got the permission to have a temple here. Bahrain is a country where people live in coexistence. There are so many mosques here around. There are churches also around. There is a synagogue also. Being in a Muslim country, Hindu temple is a very, very big thing. Obviously, it's a symbol of, of what Bahrain stands for. Uh, diversity, inclusivity. Uh, it has a lot of significance for all uh, religions, not only Hindus. It's a place where we welcome everybody. And uh, we conduct a whole lot of festivals here. We conduct a whole lot of uh, ceremonies here. And uh, we have big plans for this, land, this property, which has been 
with us for centuries. Well, this is a very ambitious project, uh, which is inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad, which will accommodate community halls. It will have a knowledge center. There are going to be other prayer halls. There are going to be kitchens there. There are going to be a museum. This project should take us around two years to build, and we all look forward to that. And it's completely funded by the community, basically. Well, when they start, I think we will have to move this temple out of this area. The location is not decided, but we have to go and we will see what, what can be done. But we would like to develop this uh, property in a very nice way so that it is a, what you call, symbol to the other neighboring countries and everybody. It has been now one year since I arrived in this beautiful kingdom. I have come here in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic and accordingly uh, dealing with the pandemic has been the topmost priority, whether it is the welfare of the Indian community here or the bilateral cooperation between our two countries. As you already may be aware that our two countries have had excellent collaboration in dealing with the pandemic. India and Bahrain worked so close together during the pandemic. Let's not forget that there was a royal decree from His uh, Majesty the King when he declared that all people living in Bahrain, regardless of their nationality, should be treated equally uh, as Bahraini citizens, even if they are expatriate, not to be distinguished between the people. And that was something went very well down in India because they appreciated that even though we have the largest community in Bahrain, expatriate community is from India, but they were treated exactly equally like Bahraini, like they have the choice of taking the vaccine that they want to their choice, the appointment, and everybody was treated very, very with respect. Yani we were maybe the, like one of the first countries that received a lot of medical support from India. Uh, we received around 100,000 of the vaccine. AstraZeneca came from from India, uh, with the coordination of our ministry in Bahrain, managed to repatriate everybody with no single minor incident. You had to have permission for airplane to land, you had to permission for people to travel, but India was very, very cooperative in this matter. So the cooperation was at its best during the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic today is over a year and a half old, and I think we are all at a stage where we we feel the need to move on for it. And we're very grateful for two, three things. I think that the governments in this part of the world were very proactive in, in reacting fast in the measures they took to control the pandemic, but also generally to see that business kept going. And that made a big difference to us. So there was, uh, an attitude from government saying that we understand this is important and they continued to support us in saying how fast can we help businesses come back. It was a very planned group-wide, including India, how we put it together. And I think that really helped us bring our people together, reduce the fear, get people to actually start thinking positively. And if you ask everyone today, they feel that they've they've actually handled it well and they've learned a lot from it. I've learned a lot from it to say, you know, these things will happen and how do we handle it in business? During the initial phases of the pandemic, the sum of the Indian nationals traveled back to India. However, most of them have now come back. As far as their uh, distribution is concerned, I would say, uh, they are present in virtually all sectors. There are old uh, Indian settlers who own big businesses in Bahrain. Then there are a lot of professionals in sectors such as there are, they are CEOs of the companies, they are chartered accountants, bankers, they are doctors and nurses, teachers, etc. There is also a sizable portion which is engaged in the blue collar jobs in the construction and maintenance sectors. Obviously, I started with Al Hoti in Saudi Arabia and then 1980, I came to Bahrain to work on the Saudi-Bahrain Causeway. 
Personally, I was involved in most of the project, I would say. Saudi Bar and Causeway, all the high-rise building from Almoy Tower onwards, because that is one of the tallest buildings in those days. Bar and Financial Harbor buildings too. Then um, World Trade Center, uh, City Center, then um, Avenues. All the major places, airport, very beginning 1982-83, the first expansion. We did all the studies on that also. We did all the piling as well as all the investigation. And so basically the whole foundation design is carried out by our team, my team, I would say. I started my business in the Gulf 1979 in Saudi Arabia. I started my business with 150 people. Our business is manpower. We must take care of our employees as one family. Give all provide all facilities, good accommodation, good food, medical, timely salaries and benefits, and to treat them as a, their own brother, their own family. Many of our people working with me, more than 36 to 40 years, same people. Okay, their son and daughters are now doctors, engineers like that. Still they are working. Why I come, this, uh, this is a very tough field. I am working mainly refineries and LNG plants. We are working with the international companies, Japanese, Europeans and Americans. So we can work with them, commitment. So each project, the main the company investing 15 to 20 billion dollars and complete the job on time. Otherwise they lose money. So their commitment will complete the job on time with a high quality and safety. So I am getting more and more jobs. And that's the reputation. Very important to keep our reputation. That uh, mantra, keep all plus uh, one team, all the work, then only we can work. So I got a global award from the construction, best in the industry from ExxonMobil in New York. That's a uh, wonderful moment. My main focus right now is uh, in the digital transformation space across all the companies that we're in. Uh, apart from that, uh, corporate governance is a big uh, focus area for me. Business process re-engineering is, is a big focus area for me. And uh, the world is changing fast and if we don't uh, adapt quickly, then uh, you know, we were risking to be left behind. So it's very important today to keep moving with the times and being agile. Um, the ability to interact with uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of people, the best in the business when it comes to uh, construction or technology or hospitality. The fact that I get to work with uh, lots of people and, uh, and in so many different industries. So that uh, it's a very privileged position to be in and uh, I'm very grateful for it. We took a different path to most of the other retailers. A lot of the other retailers at that time were either focused on grocery and representing global brands as franchise partners all over the GCC. Our focus was always on building our own brands. So looking at the customer in the Middle East and building category by category in a way we felt would be relevant to the customer in offer and in value. India is a fundamental part of our business. It's, it's a different entity, so India runs with an Indian team. But it is a very, very big part, and we've been in India for 20 years. You know, our journey into India uh, really started in earnest uh, back in 2015, when we had a transition in our senior leadership, for the first time in InvestCorp's history, in fact. And that, in turn, um, brought us to a realization that a market like India, it is critical for us to have uh, boots on the ground and to have a team uh, that is fully operational, based out of India, understands the local ecosystem, has connectivity and relationships with key stakeholders in the country. For us, it was the best of both worlds. We were able to get going in an accelerated fashion with a, with a operational going concern, if you want to call it that, on day one. In the heart of our hearts, we couldn't really have expected anything better. Uh, India is among the top investors in Bahrain with an investment uh, hovering around US dollar 1.3 billion. Uh, however, I still feel there is a lot of untapped potential for enhancing both bilateral trade and investment. Our two countries have the tradition of regular high-level bilateral visits and interaction. 
एंड टूडे अवर रिलेशंस इज ऑल इन कंपासिंग इट्स मल्टी फेसिटेड इट कवर्स ऑल इम्पॉर्टेंट एरियाज ऑफ पॉलिटिकल सिक्योरिटी इकोनॉमिक एंड ट्रेड कल्चर एंड एजुकेशन वट इज डिप्लोमेटिक रिलेशन इज इकोनॉमिकल वन इकोनॉमिक इज बैट ऑल कंट्रीज ट्राई टू हेल्प इच अदर बट नोट टू जस्ट हैव द केक एंड टेक इट ईट इट बाई सेल्फ इज टू शेयर इट विद योर पार्टनर विद इंडिया दैट्स द इमेज इज विच ट्राई टू प्रमोट फॉर पीस एंड स्टेबिलिटी फॉर द वर्ल्ड एंड द रीजन सो द विजिट इज ऑलवेज टू डिस्कस हाउ वी इवन गो फर्दर एंड स्ट्रेंथिंग आवर कॉरपोरेशन इन ऑल फील्ड ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सिक्योरिटी अदर बिजनेस इशूज and uh, there this during this visit there is always the memorandum of understanding signed between the two countries to facilitate uh, for people to live either in bahrain or to make business in bahrain and vice versa so these visits are very very important to enhance the cooperation between the countries uh, india was one of the first countries that have established relationship with bahrain diplomatic relationship with bahrain immediately since its um, independence and uh, since then bilateral relationship grew and the exchange of visits is a demonstration of the extent of this relationship the heads of the states of both the countries have exchanged the, the relationship the ministers the prime ministers our prime minister visited the India a couple of times the Indian prime ministers came to Bahrain as well and visited Bahrain His Royal Highness the Crown Prince visited India in 2012 and 13 The landmark visit of His Majesty the King to India in 2014 set the road map of our present bilateral engagement The visit of honorable prime minister Sri Narendra Modi to Bahrain in 2019 provided much needed boost to the bilateral relations and diversified these relations now all of this creates a, a very solid base to take the relationship further in the area of security of defense uh, in the uh, industry of uh, defense system etc india has developed and is seen to be and is proved to be a very strong powerhouse of military and security power and i think as we are talking about the threats that confront us in this region we can see that india today stands as a solid and as a reliable partner and allies for our future security and the defense i could mention some of the sectors which uh, uh, i think there is a huge opportunity and potential these include health sector pharmaceuticals food security logistics infrastructure hydrocarbon and renewable energy it is one very important because that's where the world is heading and india is leading so that's one is a good opportunity as well as the agriculture there is a lot of opportunity as well for bahrainis to invest in agriculture in india which are then can be supporting the country all the time and uh, you have the garment pharmaceutical is very important now because here where india is very strong in this, in introducing and manufacturing vaccine i think there is an opportunity to establish a manufacture facilities in bahrain for it to start producing this vaccine and then ship them to the rest of the world from bahrain because of the good relation we have with india and it will help the world not only this bahrain economy it will help the world bahrain as i said is the one of the most preferred uh, countries uh, for indians to work and we can see in the steady number of growth if you compare over past two decades we will see the numbers have grown significantly the professionalism hard work and work ethics of the vibrant and dynamic indian community have been acknowledged and recognized by the leadership as well as people of bahrain no the best thing of course bahrain has given is the opportunity to develop myself in my technical field 
so naturally that is the most important thing you know so wherever uh, or wherever i have reached the base is from india my mother's father he had lot of agriculture you know paddy fields and sugar cane and all kinds of uh, agriculture so a very day morning i see maybe around 100 150 people you know and so i used to mingle with these people to be and whenever they have any problem they used to even come to me and say tell your grandfather to help me this and that so so naturally that developed me the community that we find here is a blended community between the locals and the expatriates the associations that you find it's it's not just at a at a professional level but it's at a personal level and a social level as well and uh, i feel that uh, expats who tend to come to bahrain it typically is uh, you know it is definitely lengthened their stay comes and they're in for the long haul before they know it the support for the indian community here by both by royal family government uh, and the bahraini community is immense and it's not just at the local level but even you know i feel that it's there in uh, on on the diplomatic level as well probably once every two years i do try to come by and say hi i do miss home i miss the old areas where i grew up it was in um kamiz and i mean the bahrain has developed in many ways it's developed so beautifully um as much as i appreciate those things i still like going to um old areas old parts of isa town which again has changed in so many ways now um it's not as much as i like to see all that i still like to go to um um old areas small roads oh this is the little you know cold store that i used to buy um a can of pepsi from or a packet of oman chips from um and that is bahrain for me and i don't want anything uh, to take that away from bahrain i have seen a number of indian families who work in other countries they are settled here as i said this is thanks to the welcoming society and liberal and tolerant policies of the kingdom so i hope to see more numbers but i think uh, it will all depend on the job opportunities and uh, uh, and how the economies shape up of both countries but i am very very hopeful for the very bright future of bilateral relations of our two countries and i think in times to come these will only be further deepened and strengthened we have a wonderful uh, picture of the relationship through the existence of thousands and thousands of indians among our communities working with us side by side and positively contributing to the growth and development of our country i don't think there is any brighter or better picture to reflect the relationship between two countries than that of bahrain and india i have gathered i've been i've called the number of uh, leading uh, individuals in the community of both indian and bahrainis in different walks of life in business in culture in journalism and we formed uh, the safari in india society with the aim and objectives of promoting and strengthening and contributing to strengthening the relations between bahrain and india that this relation now celebrating the 50 years and we're looking to enhance this relation to even stronger ties between us and india may god help us in all this achievement and help our nation and bless our nation congratulations to both our nation
having spent close to 30 years in Bahrain myself. And let me start off by congratulating all of us, Bahrain and India, and I can count myself as being a proud member of both communities. On the 50th anniversary of the establishment of uh, diplomatic relations uh, between our uh, two respective countries, it's a great milestone and it's a, it's a real proud moment for me as well. Uh, you know, feeling the way I do as a citizen of uh, both parts of this world. This is a big congratulation going out to the Indo-Bahrain relationship that has been going on successfully and beautifully and uh, flourishing um, and thriving for the last 50 years. And um, this relationship is not going to go anywhere, but only going to grow stronger and better and uh, bigger with more and more love. I would like to congratulate Bahrain and India on completing 50 years of a bilateral relationship. It's a long one. It's a very important one. May you have many, many, many more. This is just the beginning. I'd like to congratulate both the governments of Bahrain and India on this glorious 50 year of friendship. And I'm proud to be here 41 years in this beautiful country of Bahrain.